Hello, my name is Martyr, and this is Let's Play Homeworld Remastered, and thank you for watching. Homeworld is a sci-fi RTS game, or real-time strategy game, guys, and I feel like I should start by saying that I have never played the Homeworld series, guys. I didn't know what to expect or what the game was like. I never even heard of it. I'm a Homeworld virgin, if you will. Uh, but... I've been playing it for a while now, and I do enjoy the game quite a bit. Furthermore, this is actually probably going to be part one of a two-part series. Why? Well, this is actually a two games bundled and remastered completely in one, guys. So what that basically means is that this is Homeworld part one and part two in one package. Uh, and for the most part, I've been playing Homeworld Part 1 and getting myself familiar with that type of game and, you know, all of its nuances and how it works. Homeworld 2 could be completely different from this one. I don't, I'm not sure if it is, to be honest with you. It could be. It might not be. Uh, if Homeworld 2 is more or less the same thing, it's just more story or some extra units, I might not do a video on it. I'm not really sure. But for the now, we're just going to say this is Part 1 of Part 2 series, guys. Uh, Homeworld Remastered released on Steam February 2015, guys. Uh, it was developed and published by Gearbox Software, the remastered version to be exact. You can go ahead and get Homeworld Remastered on Steam for $34.99. Additionally, you can get the soundtracks for $8 a pop. And I will say the soundtracks are pretty awesomely, really awesome and very well done. Now, with my newbie eyes, guys, and initial first impression, guys, Homeworld is a relaxed RTS game. It's not as super action-packed as I would have expected. I mean, I guess I'm used to more, you know, modern RTS games to really kind of get things going, get you into the action type of things. This was more of a, you were going to strategize, you're going to plan things out, you're going to build a small fleet, you're going to launch a attack from all sides, up, up, down, left, right. It's really kind of a, a strategist's game is the best way to describe it. Now, the original developer, of course, is Relic, and the original publisher was Sierra, and this game originally released in September 1999. So, this game has really, it's kind of for its time, it's really ahead, I will say that much. Uh, but it also kind of falls in a weird place for me. Like, it is kind of AAA, but at the same time, it kind of isn't. I mean, because it was released in 1999, guys. But for the classifications of this video, that's why it is a AAA title, which means I will probably hold it to a little bit higher degree than I would other games. Without further ado, let's actually get into the game itself. Let's get start off with the options, of course, guys. And I will say there's a whole plethora of options guys lots of video control here lots of stuff that you can mess around with motion blur depth bias hdr rays the game does feature 1080p resolutions all that good stuff guys it's all there for you to mess with i didn't really mess with it too much i just kind of let it go to whatever it wanted to go to i'm sure i could probably go in here and probably set um set it to probably even higher settings than i have it currently but even at settings i have it right, right now it's really gorgeous of a game uh you have some audio sliders of course some gameplay options you can uh, enable edge of screen, end lips. I don't know what the hell end lips are. Military selection prick. Prick. Okay, am I, am I seeing this right or is this cut off? Am I crazy? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna activate subtitles because I'm probably going to be talking over those. Uh, we also have fully rebindable keys, which is very nice because this game is rather complicated. I will say that much. It's not necessarily the world's most easiest game to start up and playing. Uh, as a matter of fact, I will highly suggest to you that if you do plan on getting this game, uh, you do play the tutorial. Because the tutorial it does a really good job of explaining things and how everything works. Uh, and I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Now, there is a couple extra features that do need to be mentioned here. Uh, like I said, this is one of two games. There's two games in the bundle. You can play the classic versions of the game. If you don't want to play the remastered versions, you don't like what they did, you can play the original versions. Not only that, there is a multiplayer that is specifically made... Uh, I guess for the remastered version, it allows you to just get, play against other players in kind of like a PvP, uh, you know, RTS style, you know, game mode, as it were, guys. But you can, of course, play against the CPU as well here. Um, and basically, we're just going to be checking out kind of where I am uh, in the current campaign. I'm actually up to Mission 4, and I've been playing about, I would say, about, uh, you know, three hours or so. Each mission is rather, I don't want to say slow. It just, it takes a while to complete any mission. It's not a fast-paced RTS. It's a, it's a take-your-time style RTS game, guys. It does take a while to also load up from uh, save file to save file. We'll say that much as well. 
Uh, it's not really, it does take a little bit to load up, about, you know, 15, 30 seconds to load up each mission or so. Uh, so, basically what you're looking at right here, well, there's, there's a lot going on here, guys. Now, the camera controls are something that are going to be desired, they're not exactly fantastic. Ready. Where are they going? Okay, well, that's fine, they can go over there. Uh, matter of fact, I do believe for some reason my mouse wheel is not scrolling in or out right now. Why is that? That's just a little strange. Let's go here to the options screen here and see if we can figure out why that's happening. Uh, I don't know why that's happening. That's very strange. Uh, zoom in. Where's the zoom in features? Zoomy, zoomy, zoom. We're just going to restore to restore control. Yes. Wait, hold on. Yes. And hopefully that will fix our issues here. Okay. No, it did not. That's a little strange. I don't know why it's doing that. That's completely strange to me. I can't actually... I can kind of move my... There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay. Whew. I was wondering what was going on there. I guess because the mission was still going activating there. So basically, let's talk about what you're looking at here. First off, like I said, the controls for the camera are not necessarily the best thing in the world. As a matter of fact, they take some finagling getting used to it. I will say, though, that they do allow you to get ridiculously close to some of your ships. Like, you can get really detailed... Uh, close to your ships here guys you can get really close to them look at them really neat details I will say the graphics that are that have been redone in this game I'm just gonna say it all, right off the bat are fantastic they're amazing uh, all the explosions everything the way everything looks the galaxy the, the nebulas I mean look at that that's freaking gorgeous uh, and it does a really good job of um, you know the graphics are gorgeous I should say now the story here is basically your race that was you know they're basically kind of obliterated uh, it's not necessarily the most, you know, you've heard the storyline before. A lot of people like the storyline. I've, I've seen it before. I've watched Robotech, for instance. Um, but basically, you're you're trying to find a new homeworld after your current homeworld was destroyed. That's basically the gist of it right now. Uh, and basically, this is the homeworld ship. This is the, the, the capital ship. This is the ship that basically will do everything you want to do. It'll research. It'll build stuff. This is what you need to protect. This is essentially kind of like your command post, in a resource way. Resource controller complete. To increase harvesting efficiency, move your resource controller as close to heavy resource areas as possible. All right, you got it, man. I will do that once I build it. Oh, okay, so we have a scene here really quick. Long-range sensors indicate a Mothership-class mass signature. Oh, God. It's coming in fast. Power readings are off the scale. Full combat alert. Stand by for contact. Oh, boy. Well, we're going we're gonna to get some action here, guys. Uh, we're going to talk about features on the fly, basically. Can we, can we, can you stop that? Holy shit! That looks like a big old butthole. What is that? Is that from Star Wars? Are, are they, is it the Droidicus? I think it's really impressive looking. My god. Uh, can I send my fleet to attack that? I already have a small fleet. They can totally handle this. Oh, it's spinning dramatically. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, we get it. It's a ship. It's a massive ship. Oh, I don't think we're gonna get to destroy that thing, are we? Ambassador away. Oh boy. Maybe they want to talk. There's really well-done cutscenes. There's uh, voice work, all that good kind of stuff, guys. Let's see what happens here when we go to make contact with this alien life form, and then we'll hopefully get to talk more about the UI and all that stuff, and talking about how uh, construction and research works. Lost guidance and are being drawn in. Oh, I don't want to be an ambassador if I were them. Well, yeah, they're they're probably tractor beaming you in. There's a lot of lights. There seems to be some kind of activity inside. I can see. We are the Ventusi, and welcome you on to the Sierra Cultures, the Unbound. Whoa. The African tree groups were established for the first time by our ancestors. The resources you collect are of value to the Ventusi Exchange. It will serve as an acceptable medium for trade. It has been our custom to equip trading partners with an exchange unit. It is therefore been provided to your ambassador as a gesture of goodwill. Alright, alright, that's good. You see, they're not automatically pissed off. That's good to know. All right, the cutscenes are done very well. Like I said, the sound in the game is phenomenal as well. Everything visually, 
Audio wise, it's all done very well. The control scheme, there's no controller support right now in the game. Uh, but once you get used to it, it really doesn't become much of an issue. Okay, so that guy's just gonna sit there next to us? That's freaking me out. So yeah, I guess he's an ally. That's what yellow means. Alright, so let's talk about what you're looking at right here, guys. On the top, we have our resource units, basically, kind of like our resources. We collect those from these asteroids by sending ships to them. They collect them, we send them back, and then we can make or research things. To the top right, we have several tabs up here. We're going to go into the game itself. And this is basically you're building from your mothership, basically. You can build all sorts of different kinds of ships. Actually, I'm just going to show all. You have fighter class, correct class, frigate class. Like I said, it's a very slow-paced game. It's not necessarily the world's fastest game. Uh, you're just kind of... It, it, things take a while to get things done. It takes any like a long time to move Group like ships. Like, here's my fleet currently. I'm gonna move them. In. You can see right here they're just gonna kind of slowly Local move fleet. towards the enemy ships here, well, the like, uh, allied ship here, I should say. Um, it just takes a while to get anything done. It's a, it's a slower paced RTS game. It doesn't mean it's, it's like any it's any less. It's not any less enjoyable. It's just a slower paced game. Just keep that in mind. So basically, yes, this, the mothership can build all sorts of different kinds of fighter class, resources, capital ships eventually. I haven't gotten access to those yet. And they all do something, and they all have kind of like a, a strength versus a weakness type of thing. So like, light corvettes are strong versus fighters, but weak versus frigates and capital ships. Uh, assault frigates are strong versus corvettes and frigates, weak versus bombers and capital ships. You get the basic idea. Everything has kind of like a tic-tac-toe, something it's strong against, something it's weak against. Uh, and you need to kind of plan for that. Always have a diversified amount of troops to take care of the enemies. I'm going to zoom in here really closely here. Uh, dock order confirmed. Docking no, do not, do not dock. Do not dock. Locked in. That's free free line really cool, by the way. Uh, so yeah, basically you can build all sorts of different kinds of ships. Of course you have research. Again, this, this was 1990. I think it was kind of impressive. Uh, you can research things, basically give you access to bigger, better ships, more different kinds of vessels, or all sorts of stuff there. Again, this is just part one. It's kind of a little bit more simplistic, and I might not have access to all the features, to be honest with you, uh, because this is as far as I've gotten in the campaign. All right, so we got to build something here. What do we got to build? We have enough resources, right? What do we got to build? We got to build a resource uh, controller. That's we we got to build a resource controller. That's our current objective here. And there's different classifications of, sh of ships, frigates, corvettes. All of them basically serve the battle in some way or different form. Now, of course, this is an RTS, guy, so you can assign groups... Uh, simply by pressing Control Two, Group two designated. Group one, and you get the basic idea. Group you kind of manipulate copy. your different groups that way. Uh, you have research ships, Ready. basically, which is what this is. No, this is a resource controller. Oh, sorry. Actually, wait. We already have a resource controller. No, no, no. Cancel this then. Cancel that. Resource controller. Copy. Go. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna just push on the edge of the screen here. Destination locked in. And he's going to start flying his happy ass over there. Now, there is an alternative mode, actually, to this game, which is if you hit space bar. It kind of brings up this almost, like, radar-esque tactical aspect screen to things where you can see things kind of in minute detail and give commands almost like in a global way, kind of like if you were, like, a Star, you know, Star Wars commander type thing, uh, looking at it from, like, above on a screen there. It really is cool. It allows you to kind of... Uh, designate certain coordinates if you want Project certain groups group to move in certain copy. directions. Like, you want this group to go here, but we're also going to have them move up ridiculous amounts of, you know, space. Yes, because, of course, this is space here. You can move just about any direction. You can attack enemies from above, from below, all sorts of different kinds of directions, and that is really awesome. I enjoy that aspect quite a bit, and I think it's really, really neat. Uh, so this is kind of like just like a global tactical command mode is the best way to describe it. Now, of course, there's the standard stuff for RTS games. If you kind of click on a unit here, you can see that basically Confirm. they're going to have different kinds of uh, stats here. Um, you also have, you know, aggressive, passive, or defensive stances. Basically, how they'll react to enemy attacks. Uh, you also have formations, as you can see right here. I have my my current fleet here in formation in the what is this fleet formation called it's called the frigate line and formations can kind of affect combat in different ways uh, because it's depending on what formation you have your fleet in it can kind of attack things more efficiently is the best way to, to regard it and let, instead of just leaving it all willy-nilly you say go in a v formation go in an x formation and they'll attack things a little, a little bit more better formation i will say that's really neat to see them kind of shift uh into formation there i think it's really cool looking when they do that. So you can see that right there. They're like a giant cross formation right now. We'll put them in a V formation. Acknowledged. 
And they really, it does a really cool job of kind of shifting. Now, I have heard that there's some weird, like, uh, bugs when it comes to the formations. Like, sometimes the enemies will get the advantage on you during, depending on what kind of formation you take. I really haven't encountered that yet. Again, I've only been playing the game for about, you know, two, three hours. Um, which, I mean, it's, it's something to be said. I mean, when you've been playing a game for two or three hours and you necessarily haven't gotten, you know, all, the entire feel of the game, that is something to be said. I mean, what do I need? Tyrannic raiders, oh. servants of the Tidam, are arriving. They must not learn of our contact. We must depart. All that moves is easily heard in the void. We will listen for you. Farewell. All right. Strike group moving. So I'm guessing that means trouble, eh? All right, let's see what's going on here. We're gonna take a look at the tactical view here. No enemy contacts or anything of the sorts. Huh. I wonder what's going on here. Uh, let's see our current objectives. We've conquered, like I said, we've accomplished our current objectives. Right now, we're just kind of just gathering resources at this point. Roger. Uh, I'm pretty sure this ship. All I have to do is just kind of moving to destination. Park him nearby. Is that what I have to do? Yeah, he's kind of like a mobile resource plants the ships can dock with him uh, instead of having to go all the way back to the mothership back and forth because the mothership itself is very slow as you can imagine I think it can move mothership. nah I can't move right now but eventually it can move uh, depending on what game mode you're in like if you're playing um, just versus the CPU it can move uh, right now I don't know what's going on I guess we're just kind of waiting for enemy hostiles I don't know what we're waiting for game talk to me it's not talking to me. It's not saying much to me. Of course, you can pause the game, look at all the options, save campaign, all that good kind of stuff here. Uh, I would love to show you some action, but uh, apparently it's just going to take a sweet-ass time with that. These buttons here, not really sure what they're for. I guess they're just information, tactical information. They kind of display your goals, how many ships of each kind you have. As you can see, there's kind of like a total limit here that you can actually have. I probably need to build way more build way more fighters than I have than I currently have. But again, I'm just kinda just near the beginning of the game and kind of a newbie when it comes to homeworld guys. There's a lot of probably information that I'm not currently aware of. We're gonna send we're gonna build a probe here, because I feel like Mothership. Something strange is going on here. We're gonna build a probe. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna be caught on wares here. So we're gonna start building a ship here. It's gonna start being constructed. Aha, there we go. What was that? Resource collector under attack. What? Group one reporting. Move order confirmed. Repairs initiated. Destination locked in. Probe what the complete. hell? Strike group to battle positions. We got enemy hostile contacts, man. Ready. They're taking out my ships. Standing by. Copy. All right, we're gonna back these guys off. Green line confirmed. That is reported. Get out of there, guys! Holy crap! Acknowledged. That is a lot of enemy fighters. Is that Corvettes? What are these guys? Resource collector taking enemy fire. All right, so basically the battle's already begun. Oddly enough, I don't know why I'm not hearing any sound effects. It's a little strange. I will say that much. Did I turn off the sound effects by accident? <laughs> it's possible the game's just having some strange interactions with my recording software. Because I don't hear any so combat sound effects currently right now. All right, well... For some reason, I can't hear any sound effects. Watch your six. But uh, basically, we've engaged the enemy here. We can actually hit tab, and we'll actually get a good view of how many Resource enemies there are under in the area, which looks like there's quite a few. Frigate under attack. Jeez, Louise! Massive enemy forces attacking ours here. Uh, we gotta take a look at how our fleet's doing here. I will say that the UI is rather tiny. It's not necessarily the world's greatest, you know, thing to kind of look at. Sometimes it's difficult. All right, stay with me now. Difficult to see. I'm gonna have these ships dock. With mobile refinery, resource collector under attack. Copy. Oh come on, you can make Ready it, little by. guy. You can make it. You can make it. Don't die. Drawing heavy fire. Strike group under enemy attack. Resource oh, no. collector under attack. Roger. Copy. Confirmed. En route. Get out of there, man! Moving to destination. Move order confirmed. Oh, he's dead. I think he died. I lost him. Gosh dang it. 
All right, so we're all, there's a lot of freaking enemies here, man. We got Corvettes, lots of Corvettes. Oh my goodness, so many Corvettes. Corvettes are kind of like your basic, like standard tank, if you will. Uh, they're kind of the beefy trooper, whereas, you know, fighters are more of like your infantry, basically. I don't exactly understand why is it that I cannot hear any sound effects. It's a little strange. I'm sure it's probably just something on my, under my settings that just is not letting me hear that. Again, there's a lot of finagling that's going to go on with this game. I will say that much as well. Um, and there's, there's a couple of weird hiccups here and there, even in the remastered version, uh, that need to be kind of touched up on, I feel. Uh, right now, our troops are scattered to the four winds. We're just fighting like crazy all over the place. I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing. The mothership, mothership can fire at stuff. Target locked. Let's see if we can zoom in here. The, yeah, I don't know why we're not hearing anything. It's Strike a little strange. We caught him napping. No it's, I think the game's probably bugging out a, a little bit right now, actually. Because I'm not even hearing that guy voice act anymore. Uh, it's a little strange, I will say that much. But we're going to kill it there. Uh, we're going to head back to the main menu. Hopefully that'll fix our issues here. If not, it's just because um, the game's kind of bugging out there, guys. I apologize for that. There's really nothing I can do about it. Um, probably just interacting strangely with my uh, recording software. But yeah, guys, I mean, it's a really cool game. It has a lot of neat features. It's a very slower-paced RTS game. It's still really tactical, though. There's still a lot of strategy to it. A lot of different kinds of ships to build. Uh, you do have that player versus CPU mode here. Which you can actually play different races here. Uh, we can play the Higar and the Vigar. The, I can't pronounce any of these. The Taladan. Uh, we'll just ch I'll check that out really quick. And there's also different, many kinds of map modes here. So up to eight players. Look at that. That'd be friggin' crazy. Uh, and let's just check out the size and scope of this board. I'm just curious. We can also change resources, all that good kind of stuff. There are lots of different features there for you to change uh, and you know mess around with anybody who enjoys RTS would want these types of features, obviously. Alright, who are we now? Our ship's gonna come in. We're some weird looking, weird ship there. Oh my god, this kind of looks like a, a, one of those ships from uh, FTL. They look like, what are those robot dudes called? I forget what they're called. It's been a while since I played uh, FTL. But to get the basic idea, this is kind of the same thing here. This is your mothership here, and you have to destroy other enemies here in the sector of space here. Obviously, you can see how it was divided uh, when we first loaded up the map here. We also have an ally over here, as we can take a look at, and what his ship looks like. A little bit different. I have to say, it's really cool looking, though. Really like that ship design. Very neat. But yeah, I mean, it's a really cool game. There's a lot of things and facets I haven't explored yet. This is just kind of my initial first reaction to it this is my kind of like my fish my first you know inkling my first taste of homeworld it's enjoyable it's a fun game but it, like i said it's just a little bit slower paced i heard that there's some weird things with the formations going on in this game in all though i mean for a remastered game it's very well done guys uh it's a lot of fun i think you will enjoy it, it has a really intriguing story good tutorial good graphics probably a lot of great replay value and this is just part one part two I'll be checking that out. And if, like I said, if there's any, a really significant difference between part one and part two, which, you know, most of the time there is, uh, I'll probably be doing a video on that as well, guys. But that's going to kind of wrap up Homeworld. I should also mention there is mod support for this game, which is also a really neat thing, guys. Um, so, yeah, we'll just stay tuned for part two, which we'll be checking out Homeworld 2 and seeing what that game's like, see if it's any different, guys. I'm going to keep playing this one for a little while, see, so get pretty deep into it, and then maybe check out Homeworld 2, guys. It might be... In a couple of weeks, I'm not really sure, guys. So, I want to say big thanks to the developer and publisher for a chance to check out this title. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe and share, guys, and I'll keep bringing you awesome games, guys. If you really enjoyed this video, maybe consider hitting up that tip jar if you're feeling generous of heart. All tips go to improving the channel or future giveaways. Till next time, guys, we will see you on the next video.